five of the biggest mistakes that beginner lifters make. That if they fix these and just didn't do this stupid shit, they would see the most amount of progress. Therefore, the most amount of gains. Therefore, the most amount of commitment. Therefore, the most amount of happiness that comes from all of this. Now, are you a beginner lifter, you may ask yourself? Well, I will say, if you're within a training age, a training age of one to two years, I would say yes. How do you know how good your training age is? I would ask you a few questions. Do you log lifts week in, week out? Do you take progress photos? Do you track calories? If the answer is no to any of those questions, you're probably still in the beginner stage. How fast do you see your numbers go up in the gym? If you can see gains going on a session by session basis, potentially you're still, I mean, depends case by case, maybe, you, maybe you're detrained, you've not been in the gym for a while, then, then I would say yes as well. Do you understand what movement, why you do certain movements to get a certain outcome? Or is it just a case of, I'm going to do this for chess because I think it works my chest? Then I'd probably say we're still in the beginning stage. Either way, when it comes to this style of video, we can all take a piece of humble pie. I 100% still see myself as an intermediate when maybe I've had, like, I've done thousands of workouts. I could say I'm advanced, I know how to get people good results, but I'm gonna take a piece of humble pie as well and say that I'll still say I'm an intermediate. So it would serve you to still listen to what is in this video, even if you think you're maybe an intermediate, because there is a fair crossover between the two. So the problem we have is the beginner lifter who falls foul to these mistakes, which inevitably will lose consistency, will lose drive, and will actually lose him ever thinking that this is a good thing to do long term ultimately leaving him feeling those emotions that got him into the gym in the first place of feeling small, insecure, lack of, less manliness, they will still be present in your mind. Now remember, if that is still present in your mind, how are you going to perform in work, in your career? Better or worse? Probably worse. How are you going to perform in your social life if you're performing worse at work and also you feel small, skinny because of the gym's not going too well? Better or worse? Probably worse. So we know that just by fixing what we do in the gym is going to inherently make us look and feel better, which means we're going to perform better at work, which means we're then going to be up at work, up in the gym. How are we then going to perform for our families and our social life? Better or worse? Probably better. So if those three areas are going in, in a better space, how are we going to feel about ourselves? Much better. And it just continues to spiral up and up and up. So it sounds small, but actually if you fix the gym, you kind of fix everything to do with life. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So what is the goal for a beginner lifter? I believe the goal for a beginner lifter is to complete one year of consistent training. If you complete one year of consistent training, you will outdo 90% of most men. Because most men go to the gym, just try it for a little bit, fall off, try it again, fall off, try it again, go once a week, go twice the next week, go three times, go once, go twice. And they just never really build any consistency. When you don't do this consistently enough, you won't see results. That's a fact. You need to understand that you'll be doing this for the rest of your life as soon as you start. It's just who you are now. Don't even think of it as a chore that you need to do. Just think of it as that is your identity. You are a gym goer now. As soon as you watch my videos, you are a fucking gym goer. I've got you and I'll make sure you go to the gym. I'll come through the screen to your house and drag you by the earlobes to the gym. So we want them to build consistency. That is the, if you build consistency, you will make fucking gains. Fact, you will make gains. The next thing I would say we need to improve on is your form. And the reason I say this is when we speak about working harder versus smarter. Do you want to work really, really fucking hard and get 10% of the progress? Or do you want to work really, really fucking hard and get 80% of the progress? You know, obviously, which one the answer is, but people still train with poor form, with maximum aggression, and wonder why they don't make any fucking progress, because they just never took the time to think, let's master how this exercise should actually be performed. It's been around for tens of years, maybe even a hundred years. I should probably learn how to do it properly, because everyone else has seemed to have got a lot of good results from it, and I don't. Like, sometimes we need to just think, are we being a moron here? Is it, if everyone else is getting something and we're not, surely we should just think, like, are we doing it correctly? People will always hear you say, oh, technique, technique's the most important thing with a gym. And honestly, it's, it's for a reason. As annoying as it sounds, I know you want to go in there and just fucking send it and move loads of weight and build loads of muscle. I get that. I'm the same. 
But honestly, the moment you just nail your technique right, it's basically like you're, you're, you've gone from like a rowing boat to a fucking jet ski to gains. That's literally how it comes down to. And obviously, of course, the goal will be to build muscle. That is obviously the goal. If you get the first two right, the last one will follow. Um, and that wants to be tracked that we are building muscle. So we're going to go into the mistakes. Ironically, number one is training too much. Look at it that you have a box of tools. You've just started into the gym, okay? You don't need to use all your tools at one given time, which means you don't need to train on a six-day training split with the, the, the best exercises, with this diet, with this amount of steps, and this amount of cardio. Why? Because honestly, when you just start out or you're new to training, your body will respond to pretty much fucking anything. Now, the reason why you don't want to play your cards too fast is, where do you go from there? If you're already on a tr six-day training split and you've only just started, how do you progress that? Hard, isn't it? So honestly, if you just started in the gym, you will see great amount of gains off training three times a week, full body on each session, and literally training one, one exercise for one muscle group per session. You will see some beautiful amount of gains on that. Until you don't, and then what do you do? You rejig the training program and the volume to add a fourth day in, and then a fifth, and maybe, I don't think a six is necessary. I only train five. Uh, some people love a six day. I used to do a six day, but I don't really think it's necessary. So just don't play all your cards at once. You're gonna need to give the body a new response and a new stimulus as it, as it adapts too well to the old one. So ha make sure you've got cards in your top left to play. Just like when we diet you down, we don't start you low calorie high cardio. No, we start you probably just below maintenance and then we continue to pull food if necessary or we can just increase through output, but we pull one lever rather than the next so that we don't use all our cards because we need to keep get the body uh, allowing us to give a response. So training too much is actually a downfall. Three times a week when you just start out is enough. Move to four after you've been doing it about a year. Number two, focusing on load instead of arm path. And I'm going to put specifically arm path, which means you just focus on moving the weight from A to B instead of thinking, right, let's think about this logically here. What muscle am I trying to train? Because the exercise I'm doing is the tool to train the muscle. I'm not training to be good at bench press. I'm using the bench press to build my pecs. Okay, right. So if the, the goal is the pecs, where do the pecs start and finish? Let's just have a, look, a quick little look at anatomy because then that will mean that I'm basically drawing a map between my start and my finish point and I know I want to get from A to B, which means I want to close the gap. Just like you would do if you were driving up the motorway, you get your Apple Maps out, you put where you're going, where you're coming from, and you're going to close the gap. The same comes for training in the gym. So the reason I put arm path is you will then adjust your arm to then be in the optimal space to close the origin and the insertion of the muscle together. Focus on that. Focus on stretching the muscle and shortening the muscle instead of what is on the bar. What's on the bar is the same as what we have up here. It's the case of what is on the bar is what your body needs, the stimulus your body needed to get the response. As soon as you've got the response, brilliant. We don't really care what disc is on the bar. Obviously, we do from the point that we're going to track it and progress it. But if we can get a stimulus and a response out of a certain amount of load, even if it's a lower amount, brilliant. Because the lower it is, the more room we've got to progress up the way, up the way anyway. So we want to focus on getting the technique right first getting the arm path moving in the correct position because, hey, you're not going to get injured anyway. The reason why people have fucked shoulders because they're pressing like, like that out wide when just tuck your fucking elbow in for goodness sake where it should be, get through a deeper range, bring the bicep across the chest and shorten the pec. Then continue to add load when it's too easy to do so for the upper tier of the rep ranges. Focus on the arm path. Don't focus on the load. The load will come anyway, obviously, as you get stronger and you adapt. Number three, not long in lifts. For probably the longest time, I did not log lifts. And like, no wonder you don't make progress because it's like, how the fuck, <laughs> how do you know what you did last time? Like, you can remember maybe your top few exercises, but not anything else. If you're serious about this, just write it down. It doesn't take long. You do it in your rest period. Bang, bang, bang. There's apps and shit now these days. There's literally no excuse not to be logging your lifts. That's like saying, I'm never going to log my spending because, well... Why? I'll just keep spending and there's probably money in the bank. You just wouldn't do it. You would check you had money. You know how much money you've got in your bank. 
So you need to know what you did last time so you can progress it from, from the time before. So log your fucking lifts. That's a simple one. Fourth one, expecting results too fast. Now actually, in the beginning, you will see the fastest amount of gains, but what you're thinking you're going to look like at the end is probably not how you're going to look. And that's okay, because it takes a long time. If you look at someone in good shape, it probably took them a long time to get there. Unless they had good genetics, which most people don't, they probably took them a long time to get there. So don't compare yourself to how their year five is when you're three months into it, all right? Just understand, it's going to take a bit of time. Be okay with that. Just think, I'm not going to say only compare yourself to yourself because it's kind of gay. Like, compare yourself to other people, be competitive, aim to, to chase after them, but just understand that there are levels to this game. If someone's been doing it five years and you say you're going to compete with them, maybe you're not going to compete with them. But I like the energy, I like the drive, and I like the desire. And I will tell you that across this channel multiple times. Always desire more, always compare yourself to others. Life is competition. Don't fucking just think you're in competition with yourself, because you're not. But when you are starting out at the gym, just don't expect the results to come as fast as you see another guy, because you'll be very, very disheartened. And the fifth one is not using machines. People go to the machines and think machines are for fucking chicks. Honestly, machines are built for a reason. They move with the correct arm path in mind because whoever built them, I mean, I'm not going to speak for every machine. There's some guff machines out there. But they were built to literally move the load exactly as it needed to be to train that working muscle. It doesn't have a picture of what muscle it is you're supposed to be working on there. So actually, machines are very, very good because when you start out at the gym, your stability for given exercises is not great. Your arm path to move in that area is not great because you're just not used to moving your body through that range. So I would argue, go to things that are more stable. If something is more stable, A, it's more loadable because less shit is going on and moving. So you could actually challenge the working muscle more using the machines than you can when you use the free weights when you start out. Now I'm not saying never do free weights, and there is a time and a place for stability. And there is a good amount of gains to be made when, when we do them. But if your gym has machines, let me tell you now, you should definitely utilize them. You 100% you should utilize them. You should get strong on those and then increase to free weights. A lot of gains will be made. Because remember, you're new to stimulus. So whatever stimulus you put on your body, you're going to see a progress. But it, as long as you can tangibly show you progressed across that lift, you're going to see gains anyway. So these are the five things that beginners generally fuck up and then wonder why they're not growing like this guy here. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram. Then if you want to work specifically with me, book a call and join the Gorilla Platoon. See you tomorrow.